Hello everyone and welcome to Jumpoody Jams, the only podcast that talks about Jumpoochie heroes. That's right, I remembered last episode where I said <laughs> this show is called Jumpoody Jams, the actual game is called Jumpoochie <laughs> Heroes. <laughs> the game itself is not called that. Yes, exactly. Spelled the same way, <laughs> but very different. If anything, we should change our spelling to uh, Jumpoochie and then say it's actually pronounced Jumpoody. Just to really, <laughs> we already have a dedicated following of decent amount of people here. I think they will accept the name change this many episodes in. It's also but, a bit. Uh, of it. Do it like mm-hmm. the um, like the JoJo character. So it's J U M P U C C I. <laughs> oh no! I, no, I should do it like uh, jo- JoJo translations, where it's nothing like the actual thing at all. Oh, this in Japan <laughs> is called uh, Jumpuchi Heroes. Over here, it's called uh, Strong Men. There you go. <laughs> That's what it's Strong Man crossover. Strong Man crossover. <laughs> I may or may not have looked up what they call Limp Biscuit in the English version. Flaccid and I was, Pancake? <laughs> yeah, flaccid Pancake. Which, sound, to be fair, sounds like a Limp Biscuit song. Well, I was like, you have to be so into the catalog of Limp Biscuit to understand that this is a <laughs> Limp Biscuit reference. I, I think at some point they just started having fun with it because they realized how stupid it was. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. Like how uh, Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap is Filthy Axe at a Reasonable Price. <laughs> filthy Axe at a Reasonable Price. That's going to be great when... Uh, you can tell that Stone Ocean just came out. Um, whenever you're here, you're, whenever you're watching the Japanese dub and watching it on Netflix, when they say uh, Dirt Deeds Done Dirt Cheap and it translates to <laughs> Filthy Actions Done at a Reasonable Price, you go, wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> that clearly is not what that man said at all. Uh, but yeah, that uh, we're here to talk about some good old uh, Jumpuchi heroes. Uh, we missed a lot because we ended up skipping a week because we were both busy with stuff. So we yeah, cannot... we ended up skipping last week. So we kind of skipped the whole. Um... Yeah, Yuna. Yuna, but... yeah, the whole Yuna thing. So they're, they're not available anymore, but don't worry, I, I am still going to talk about them, because we need to talk about them. And uh, this this week is the uh, Black Clover um, celebration, so we're going to, before we start, there's two things we need to bring up. One, Black Clover fans, I'm just going to apologize right now. There's, you guys already go through a lot, you understand that this is what's going to happen, both me and Zen, I actively have not read your manga, so I can't really insult the quality of it. Zen is Zen. You know you're about to get completely lambasted and roasted. <laughs> so just know that going in, that this is all for fun and games, and <laughs> it's not serious. <laughs> Please understand, it's what we're oh, trying to say. It's gonna be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. It, it honestly, I think we were hard. We were, pro- we were probably harder on World Trigger. <laughs> Probably, yeah, because we were like, what even the fuck is this? <laughs> we attacked Will Trigger with a, a reckless abandon of just like, this isn't even real! And then we both ended up liking it when we actually read it, so... That's not gonna happen with Black Clover, but hey, at least the jokes will be good. <laughs> the other thing we need to talk about, because this is actually something that I was like, ah, oh, man, we should, I wish we could have talked about it last week. I can't believe the fucking, the JP players complained and made the Black Friday banner worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I saw that. They didn't like. I'm not sure I understand the the reasoning behind it. Like, because the <laughs> some it might it was probably OCHD. Because who? I mean, who else? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Talks about this game other than us and him. Yeah. Um. He said something like, "They don't like it because um." Like, if there's Musos in the banner, it doesn't guarantee limiteds or something like that? I, I think what happened is that Muso banners don't have limiteds in it. and But you, it had to have, because it had a Muso on the picture, but it still had the limiteds on the picture, too. No, they mean in a regular Muso banner. Wait, oh, are, yeah. yeah. In, in a, in regular, like a normal one. Yeah, in a yeah. normal one, there's no limiteds, and you have to do 30-something summons. And in this one, you get a limited in eight... Well, basically what they were saying is like that that's not fair for the people who went 30 
multis deep for pity and also you're not giving us a lot of currency to summon on this so it kind of feels like weird for the musos to be on here oh like you're trying to to sneak us or something yeah it's really weird in a, in a sense of like it's never happened before in a gotcha where people banded together and said this isn't right for the people who summon this way and it's it's kind of like the I guess the student loan debt uh, thing, where it's like it's not fair for the people who already paid their student loans. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, yeah, but what about <laughs> I'm suffering, bro? I don't have a muso. This would have been very good for me. Yeah, that is a little weird because like it's it's supposed to be like a Black Friday like crazy deal. But are you gonna wait all year for one banner and then be like, yeah, that's that's the yeah. only time I'm ever going to summon for a Muso is this one banner next year. I also think so. like it's um, similar to how they do those large batches of um, limiteds on it is that you weren't actually guaranteed a Muso. It just said limited, and then it uh-huh. didn't say anything more. Plus, if you did get a Muso, the difference in a Muso banner when it's like uh, one and you do 30 pulls is that you're guaranteed to get that one. For all you know, you could just keep getting the same Muso that you don't need anymore. Right, and then exactly. you're like you're feeling a little. So it still makes sense. I think it's still fair in the grand scheme of things because nowhere on that step up did it say guaranteed Muso. You were never guaranteed one. So it's just really weird. I've never seen this happen before in a gotcha. Where Ever. they're actively like, no, give me less of the good thing. Yeah, where they were. Where they were <laughs> you can hear my dog going crazy because she's like, I can't believe it. I was gonna summon. I was, <laughs> I was gonna, gonna <laughs> fucking summon for Primo. <laughs> I was gonna summon. Damn it. I miss Primo. This is my second chance. But it is extremely weird. Like imagine, like for example, if they did this on Dokkan, they would never get. The, they would never hear the end of it. Basically, the idea is like, well, damn. If you summon, then that sucks. You should have waited. And this is the only gotcha in the entire world that said, "What about the people who who, who support this game? Who went in what, first? What about the people who already summoned?" Exactly. Think about the children, please. Stop this banner. Make it worse <laughs> for the good of the community. <laughs> and I feel like it's a specific <laughs> JP mindset because the people who <laughs> the people who actually who speak English and play the game going, "What the fuck did they do? <laughs> what? Yeah, they did what now?" Uh, I mean, yeah. I have the musos that I want, so it doesn't bother me. But it is weird. Like, why do you care? You yeah. got it already. Yeah, you got it already. Like, as someone as like you who has all the musos, did you care that much of the idea of someone getting it potentially easier than you? No, fuck no. Exactly. Like, I, if I want a character, I'm not going to wait until Black Friday next year to try to get them. Yeah, yeah. It's I'm going very... to get them and use them for a year, and then you guys can do whatever the fuck you want after that. Yeah. I think that that makes a lot of sense, but hey, again, very weird mindset. But I think it was worth talking about because it it's it was it, it still it still boggles my mind till today. It might go down as one of the weirdest for in general for me. <laughs> She's never seen done before, and we'll never see how. Like here's here's a take on Twitter: Muso banners are for people who have discipline or money. If they just casually start adding Muso units in all the time. Uh, saving and spending rubies becomes a joke. What do you mean? <laughs> what, the, what does that mean? What does that mean? That is so bizarre. That mindset it's is the... one banner for like a week tops. How long is the banner even up? Like not that long, I don't think. No, I think it's. Uh, let me actually check now. Actually, I also need to do my my Saint Seiya before it disappears because they fucking release the birthday banners at weird times, and I might get a limited. So let me quickly check. But it's not here for very long. I think it literally disappeared at reset. Yeah, like, it's it's not a very long banner. No, it will be gone by the time you hear and we're talking about it. But it, oh, of course, the, the my fucking thing crashed because it was going crazy. But it's, I don't know. Maybe it's one of those things of, like, whatever, maybe they saw what happened to Orc Collection with the spending and they're like, listen, we're keeping this alive. We can't let the same thing happen to us. <laughs> we're making sure that the whales have to whale no matter what. Yeah, they're basically saying, like, no, you have to you can't do this to the whales. You lose the whales, this game goes down. This game costs like three billion dollars because of all the fucking IPs that are in it. 
you literally can't afford to be generous. <laughs> More generous than you already are. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. It's a real fun... Oh, man, I have two, uh, two hours left. I'm not going to get this limited ticket. I ended up buying one of the limited tickets, and I was so pissed off because I bought... Over the course of a couple of months since we last recorded, I bought two of the limited tickets. The first one got me fucking gone. The limited gone. Oh. Second ticket, same fucking gone. Oh. Yeah, I got one of the tickets, too, and I got a Kilua that I already had at 12. Yo. He has like 18 luck on him now. <laughs> the Godspeed Killua. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I'm sitting here looking at this fucking. I hate this Killua so much, dude. Now oh, he was on the fr- he's on the free uh free one as well. The pick a limited, I think. Mm-hmm. Man. I got Visor at Ichigo from that though, who I really wanted. I now have every Bleach character, which fucking rules. Yeah, it's pretty good. It was very nice for them to do. I also got a uh, QB Naruto, the the one from I think the Hak the the not the Haku fight. The, the Sasuke was, fight, the Hidden Valley. Is that is it is it the hill in Hidden Valley? Are you talking about the QB Naruto where it's him as like a kid and he's got the aura around him? Yes. Yeah, that's uh the one from when he's fighting Sasuke. Oh, okay. I thought it was the the one from when he he goes fucking mental. He goes fucking feral when he thinks Sasuke's dead. He no, says, no, no, not that. Not the not the one where he kick, that that is the Haku fight that you were thinking of, but that's okay. not where the character's from. All right. They should add that one because that's my favorite form of Naruto. Yeah, I do like that where he just like loses his shit and just starts beating the fuck out of Haku. He just beats the ever loving shit so badly. (laughs) Yeah, I love that. (laughs) It's very good. (laughs) The the arc's great. We're we're gonna get distracted. We're gonna start talking about Naruto when they're not even on the celebration. So let's get into Black Clover's the same fucking thing. Yeah, fair fair enough. Hey, at this point, let's not start the whole. This thing is exactly like Naruto thing. (laughs) All right, otherwise we're gonna. (laughs) <laughs> We're gonna start having to throw in my hero, Jujutsu Kaisen, <laughs> anything that involves a three man <laughs> team and a leader and a, and a mentor of some kind. Oh man, the Black Friday Panther's already gone, I think. Yeah, it is. I just checked. So it's gone. <laughs> so weird. Very weird. weird. Very still, strange, yeah. Still decent enough manner to do like the the discount multi and then a free multi and maybe you get lucky, but yeah, it is nice because you get it was like five hundred for one and then the, the second one was free, yeah. so five hundred rubies because nice. twenty characters, it's a pretty good deal. Yeah. So let's talk about the old uh, celebration characters first before we get into it. We're gonna talk about specifically the ones that aren't from uh, yuna because those are the ones that literally even i haven't read them yet even though i think i did end up reading them i think I, these girls really was like mm, maybe i should read these <laughs> you know just the baby i put them in the maybe column but let's talk about them real quick we got um madoka ayukama kamakawa there you go who is from kawaguru orange road which apparently is extremely influential i was looking this up because i was like oh yeah before this manga the idea of europeans and manga was not a thing and i was like this is what really got it going this this fucking (laughs) the uh manga from i'm gonna guess the 80s based off of this yeah it has a very 80s vibe to it yeah to be fair i I really do like the look of her she definitely has that kind of like She's in one of those new songs that are just like, <laughs> one of those kind of songs. Right, yeah, of course, exactly. <laughs> she fits that aesthetic perfectly, so I really like the look of her, especially with her gigantic ass hair. I think it's great. But yeah, apparently this manga is responsible for us kind of having more kind of like European characters in manga. And I thought that was very interesting for a harem. I assume, in part of chance, I don't know if it's a harem manga, but let me just say romance manga to cut the middleman here for it to kind of be that influential so i think it's actually kind of cool that a character from this series uh, got added that's uh is she the only one from this series i'm guessing she is she is yeah she has to be there's no way that you, there's not like a bustling uh kimagura <laughs> orange road <laughs> fucking amount of characters if i were to take a guess <laughs> yeah i guess that's fair yeah so I actually did put this on my, I think I'll read, because it's not very many chapters long, it looks like. Uh, but yeah, I, I actually think, did I end up getting her? Yes, I actually did end up getting her. So I'm happy to oh, have her. Oh, you did? Nice. Yes. The only girls I got were Yuna and uh, Nanka. Oh, okay. I think this one is, her ultimate attack is, at. I'm going to just say the max level here, because that's what has it on OCHD. 
Um, heal. That's for, fine. That's the one everyone cares yeah, about anyway. Fair enough. Heal for 250% of this unit's recovery. For one turn, boost the attack of red team members by 5% for one turn. Boost the normal attack damage of red team members by 10%. That is the ultimate. The buddy skill. Um, boost the blast radius of five skill bubbles by two. Convert all blue bubbles to red for three turns. Boost the appearance rate of red bubbles for three turns. Boost the ultimate attack damage of red team members by 8%. And her passive skill is reduce the number of bubbles in effectiveness for two turns. Before this unit's turn, convert three green bubbles to yellow. Yeah, that's kind of what she does. So she looks yeah, like I a like healer. Her. Yeah, I like her too. I didn't really have a very good healer for red, so I was kind of actually very happy to get her. Definitely. And it's one. nice, like the. Uh, mm -hmm. It's nice to have a healer that has just has flat buffs to everybody, so you get a little something out of it, even when you have to pop the heal. Yeah, that's yeah, that, that that's actually very nice. It's, and ten percent's pretty all right for just normal attack damage. It's not that mm -hmm. plus five percent just flat attack power. I mean, it's not like a huge buff, but you know, yeah, a lot of other healers just heal. So you know, yeah, exactly. When some just heal, this one at least goes above that by a bit, which is nice. Right. Uh, next, we've got. Uh, no, this is the free one. This is the other banner one. Yui Kotekawa. Kotagawa? From, yeah, from Two Love Room. Something you'd think I would have read, but I have not actually Very read Very surprised you have not read Two Love Room. I have not no. either, but it, it seems like it fits your it does. aesthetic. It, it does really fit my aesthetic a whole bunch. I know the thing about Two Love Room, which I'm pretty sure it was about the, that the main girl was the mangaka's uh, wife, and then I believe she cheated on him, <laughs> or they broke up. And that's why he had to start to love Root Darkness and made that main character a side character. <laughs> because <laughs> he's like, actually. yeah, that's a, that's extremely sad for him. <laughs> but in terms of what happened, he's like, this is why you should never draw real people into manga. <laughs> yeah, probably not a good idea to get uh, that invested. But, yeah. uh, you know. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's uh, Two Love Rue, but that is... It must uh, be really popular, because there's a lot of Two Love Rue characters in this game. Oh, yeah, it is insanely popular. It's got a lot of... That's got to uh, really suck if your manga that's like a big hit that gets you famous is the one where the main character is a woman that cheated on you. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> He's going to have so many people like, oh, can you autograph this drawing of a character based on this woman that cheated on you? Oh, yeah, you got to <laughs> admit it. You just kind of look at him and go like, oh. <laughs> Oh god. Not her again. Why have I made this horrible mistake? <laughs> Why did I do this? <laughs> Such a, so bad. Every time he starts he starts autographing it and when it returns it just says, Excuse me, I said, uh, why have you just written down bitch in very small <laughs> font right here? Just says whore and kanji. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that'd be so good. Just starts attacking. <laughs> so feel oh, oh, here's a controversy apparently from Two Love Rue. I was trying to find that info. I can't find it now. So maybe I know for a fact there is a horror manga in Shonen Jump that had that exact problem. But here's one of the controversies, which was really funny. In 2012, the Two Love Rue Darkness was reviewed by the Tokyo Metropolitan. Metropolitan Assembly to see if it violated their newly passed controversial Bill 156. This was after they had received a phone call from a parent who discovered a Two Love Rue Darkness book while cleaning a son's room. The parent did not like that there was frontal nudity of a female character, including her lower body. At the meeting on April 9th, 2012, they decided that while the book did include aforementioned nudity, it did not violate the new order ordinance. This motherfucking manga got took into court. <laughs> By an angry mom? By an angry mom who found her son's copy under the bed like it was a poor mom. <laughs> <laughs> like it was a Playboy or something. It was actually just a mom. Man, what the fuck? Oh, that'd be great. Imagine if we had that kind of like response in America where it's like, I, I checked under my son's bed and there was a copy of Jujutsu Kaisen and the violence that they are showing my children, <laughs> it has to be stopped. <laughs> have to go to court. Exactly. Uh, let's get into what she does as before I get lost in the in the, the world of Two Love Rue of this idea of this manga corrupting the youth and being taken to fucking court, the Supreme Court, Two Love Rue versus America. 
Lover versus United States of America. Oh fuck, that's a that's the title. That's the title of today's <laughs> video to Love Room versus the United States of America. <laughs> All right. At max level, this is her ultimate attack. Inflict 456% of damage that ignores damage reduction for one enemy. For two turns, reduce the attack of the enemy by 10%. Remove one attack up buff from all enemies. Her buddy skill is convert one random bubble into a skill bubble with the explosive range boosted by one stage. Convert a total of four blue and black bubbles into green bubbles. Reduce the number of turns all enemies have guard by one. For three turns, boost the ultimate attack damage of all green allies by 15%. And her passive skill is, if the enemy is of the balance class, reduce the number of bubbles required to create a special skill bubble by two and boost this unit's attack by 50%. Pretty good. I like her yeah. too. Yeah, I think she's pretty solid. They could have made these units very just like, meh. But the fact that they've actually made them really strong is both very funny and also great. Because in general, all units should get the same treatment of like, it doesn't matter what your series is from. If you're a horror manga, if you're a sports manga, you should equally be as powerful as like Goku who can blow up the sun if you wanted. Oh yeah, absolutely. that's the allure of these kind of games. Like, could you imagine if everyone was scaled by their power? That shit would suck. Oh my god, that'd be so bad. The, the funny thing is, is that at least you would have your dream of every One Piece character getting stomped <laughs> by every high tier shonen. <laughs> That's true. Luffy out here fucking throwing hands with two love Roo because that's the only one he can fight. He's not touching Goku. <laughs> PvP is split up by, like, weight class. <laughs> oh, that'd be... <laughs> That'd be so good. Of like, here I'm I'm entering the low weight. This is where I have like, uh, the weird monkey from a Mon Mon Mon, and Mister Full Swing is in here too. <laughs> and then when you get to high tier, that's where you're like characters who are like. It's like Pokemon, how it's divided up by how good everyone is. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the the high tier you have the characters who are like, oh yeah, this character can like bend time to themselves. That's where. <laughs> that's where some of the JoJo characters exist and some others don't. Oh. And as funny so as that is, funny. it would be. But uh, I like the idea of just the way it is now. Of like uh, Any character from anywhere could just be as strong as anyone else. All right. Yeah, well, like that, if, if it wasn't like that, it would be unfun. But. Yeah, exactly. So those are the two non-unit uh, characters who are banner. I'm now just going to quickly mention the characters who are free to play, so you could have you can just grind them at any point and you can have them. Also from to uh, to love Roo, Nana Astar Devil Luke. She's a girl. She she looks like a devil girl. She looks yeah, like she got a little tail, little pigtails yeah. going on. Yeah, I've I remember her from Or Collection as well. She looks like every to love Roo character that I can think of, so I don't know who's who. That's, that's all I've got. <laughs> I think that I think she is a twin. If I'm going to take a wild swing here, I'm going to assume that she is a twin because I remember there being two characters as well, who like also had the Devil Luke last name. Okay. So let's go with that. Feel free to comment down below if you're a huge uh, Two Love Roo fan out there. Telling us, tell us, tell us yeah, how wrong we are. Of <laughs> yeah. How badly we're slandering Two Love Roo here. What are you talking about? This, this, this Two Love Roo is a runaway <laughs> success as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, the other free to care, free to play character, which is from Nisekoi, is Ruri Miyamoto. This is maybe the most average. Looks like they just added a Japanese girl. <laughs> ever. Yeah, she's just a just a little Japanese girl. Yeah, that's which all I can say about her. Which is even her funny. art is she's just like smiling. It's like okay. Yeah. And then when you level her up, it, there's like a pause. And then she throws up some peace. <laughs> I was like, yeah, she doesn't even really like react when you no. level her up. It's pretty funny actually because I think there's like a comedic pause to it where it's like, hey, <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> yeah, it has big like, oh, am I supposed to be doing something like energy to it? Yeah, which is really good. Uh, so again, it feels like just a Japanese girl, but yeah, anyone can get this Japanese girl now. Nice that she's free. And now we'll actually get into the unit characters, starting with the free-to-play one, which is Chiso Chito. Ch damn, damn, damn it! I know this character. Chitose. Chitose. Yeah, Chitose. That's the problem. Is I don't know how to. Pr I've read the manga, so I have no idea how to pronounce the names. Chitose Nakai. Um, do you want to take? Good. A yeah, that's a that's a good that's a good crack at it. 
Yeah, it's pretty good, I think. You want to take a quick guess at what her ability is in the in the in the manga? Uh, is it fortune manipulation? Is it are you reading the passive skill? <laughs> I am definitely reading the, the ultimate attack. <laughs> yeah, so she's the actual uh owner of the the haunted hot springs, so the of the inn that she lives in. And yeah, her she has the luck manipulation where it's like, I can give someone basically extremely good luck, but then it immediately has to back. Like she can give herself like the best luck in the world, but then that also means it immediately has to fire back, and she has to have the worst luck in the world right afterwards. Oh, <laughs> so it's like uh, it has to balance out at the end. Yeah, exactly. So she can use like she could say use her luck powers to save someone from having a bad fall. But then that means that it would have to eventually come back in some other way and hit them in some kind of messed up way. And I think in fights, she actually has also used it in kind of like a interesting way of like giving the enemy some good luck at a specific point in time. And then later on, it ends up getting them fucked over because they end up screwing up something else. Oh, so, so their bad luck comes out. Like, yeah, that's pretty funny, actually. Yeah. Very, it's a very interesting power, and even she says, like, I can't actually abuse this, because if I go too far, I might end up fucking up every absolutely everyone. It's actually very similar to uh, Undead Unluck. She basically is Unluck, but she can control it. Unluck is learning to control it now, actually, in Undead Unluck. There you go. Yeah. She basically has that uh, power, but right at the beginning of Yuna. But she doesn't like using it, because, you know, obviously... For, the, the, yeah, every, for obvious reasons. Yeah, it, the whole <laughs> immediately getting the bad luck is uh, very unfortunate. Next, we have Nanko, which is another uh, summonable unit. Do you want to take a guess at what her power is? Turning into whatever this giant titty demon is in her art? First of all, she's already a giant titty demon in her <laughs> That's form. true. I believe that is her uh, main thing. So she basically gets drinks she she's she's like a descendant of shudan doji which is a oni from japan and the onis are well known for drinking a lot so the more she drinks the more powerful she becomes and to the point where i think like near the end of the i think this is her thousand liter mo mode i think near the end of the series they say like i need to get serious and she basically tells them bring in everything and she does like a million liter mode and she <laughs> just drinks a shit give me all of it yeah, she basically goes, give me all of it. I need more. <laughs> and she turns into that form that you see there where it's a huge uh, titty Oni woman. And she's extremely powerful. Um, in her uh, in her ultimate form, probably as powerful as Yuna in the mode that we have here. And also, as a side note, she is also a manga artist. So she also draws manga <laughs> as her day job. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck is going on in this? Yeah, it's great because she also ends up getting her... This is one of those series that the harem gets so big that side characters get their own harem. So she ends up getting her own harem of characters. Of specifically women that she's interested in. It's great. And I love her absolutely. I'm glad that she's in it. I was actually kind of... Uh, I'm kind of happy that they done did the early version, which is just the thousand liter mode, because I think her near the end of the series kind of big ass huge powerful oni mode could probably be used if they ever decide to do another limited unit run but let's get into what she does so at max level her ultimate is inflict 460% damage to one enemy and if the enemy is balanced class inflict an additional 70% damage and remove ultimate da uh, ultimate attack damage boost from all enemies and uh, her buddy skill is convert 10 heart bubbles to blue, recover 2,000 HP for 6,000 6, HP in tower for two turns. 60,000. 60,000? Jesus, that's way more. 60,000. I'm bad with numbers. For two turns, reduce the appearance rate of heart bubbles to zero. For one turn, reduce damage received by blue teams by 1,900. And I'm going to guess that's 30,000 in the tower. 30,000, yeah. Mm-hmm. And her passive skill is reduce the number of turns a curse for this unit by two, boost this unit's ultimate attack damage by eighteen percent. She is the only one that I got, uh, mm -hmm. other than obviously Yuna. Mm -hmm. um, I like her. I haven't used her for anything, but I think her kit's pretty cool. Yeah, I like her too. The the big problem was that the Yuna celebration actually didn't have a a boss to use her on. <laughs> 
because it, it was they a, didn't have a curse space boss not really there wasn't really anything to use any of the banner characters on it was very again it was one of those like celebrations where it's like the midpoint of something <laughs> So there wasn't like a, it was like basically just waiting for Black Clover. Cause usually what uh, Japuti does is that they at least give you a fight that you can use the characters where they excel in. Like they're obviously built to destroy this one specific enemy. Right. Um, but because the Yuna celebration was just basically kind of like a, a, st- a stop gap into the bigger one, uh, celebrate your Twitter followers and stuff, stuff like that, there really wasn't any fights like that for specifically for you to use them and kind of excel them at so i'm still waiting to actually use her but i really do like uh her animation stuff i like that she turns into the giant uh titty demon whenever you do the old which is pretty good so you get basically the best of both worlds because you get her regular uh giant titty form then you get the actual demon form i think that's the best of both worlds yeah exactly (laughs) balanced as all things are so i think that's cool and I'm glad she's in it. And I can't wait to actually use her whenever there's a fight. <laughs> Even yeah, whenever there's Clover. a fight that actually could make use of her. Yeah, I think maybe Fauna is the one. Based off of looking at the characters that are uh, in Black Clover that are red that I think are maybe grindable. Fauna is grindable, yeah. There you go. You might you might finally be able to use her there. And finally... We get to the the true showstopper, even though we have to continue with Black Clover after this. <laughs> Yuna. <laughs> the showstopper who is not shopping the show. No. Yuna in her Tenko Awakening form. Uh, Zen, what do you think Yuna in the Haunted Hot Springs is actually about? I was just under the assumption that it was just like a dead girl with giant boobies that was haunting a place. You're half right. There is, in fact, a giant... <laughs> boobied ghost in the series um the actual thing plot of the manga is is that yuna does not remember who she is so she can't move on um because she can't remember why she's a ghost to begin with or really what what caused her to be a ghost and stuff like that and the main character is an exorcist who has like super um what's he's like super ghost sensitive to the point where he can easily get possessed like he actually says in his life i've been my life has been ruined by ghosts because they keep possessing me and then i lose literal years of my life trying to get my body back he's like when they ask him he's like how come you know how to fight he's like it's because a karate ghost took over my body for a year and he kind of just went around fighting people (laughs) (laughs) so he just remembers how to fight yeah, he just like he literally trained my body to fight, and by the time I got rid of him, like it was I had already like f- flunked out of the school I was in. <laughs> <laughs> so his entire life has basically been ruined by ghosts. It's actually really funny how many ghosts he's been possessed by. He's like, "How do you know how to cook?" He's like, "Oh yeah, because th- this uh, this chef ghost at one point took over me, and that's how I learned how to." to cook and then they show the chef ghost and he's like saying i can't move on unless i make this one meal he's going please stop i need to sleep (laughs) i don't want to be possessed by you anymore so uh they end up he ends up promising her that he will help her move on and then (laughs) the twist reveal which is where we get this form in is that yuna is in fact not actually uh yuna it's (laughs) okay let me go back so Yuna is the ninth clone of a girl, and the original girl is in a cryogenic frozen by her father because she has a very big disease that will kill her. And similar to Mr. Freeze, you know how Mr. Freeze keeps his wife uh, yeah, uh, in ice? Yeah, he's got his wife frozen so she doesn't yeah. die from whatever illness yeah. she has. So he gave her specifically like the blessing of this, like I think it was a fox demon. And the fox demon, as long as it gets its uh, share, it will keep her alive of souls. So what he does is that he starts cloning her and trying to figure out, one, how to solve her dying, basically. But also start experimenting with the clones to kind of see if she can utilize the power correctly and that it will save her in some way. So she is the ninth generation of those clones. Um, each one has basically been met with a worse and worse fate to the point where when she gets to her form, when she is born, I think near the end of her life, she's just in a wheelchair, miserable, like not enjoying her life at all. And the reason she dies is she, she visited the inn at one point, but it wasn't actually, 
She visited at one point, but she doesn't actually die there. When she dies, she's thinking of the inn, and she ends up going there. And the reason that she was thinking of the inn is that there was a person who could see into the future that told her there's actually a way for you to be happy, and the only way is for you to become basically a ghost. Because she, she shows her a future in which she's actually with someone who is extremely happy to be where, and she's loved and cared for and has actual family, and the only way for her to actually get that future is to die turn into a ghost and visit an inn <laughs> and in that inn she will find the people that will let her be there uh so she eventually gets this info told to her after someone's basically telling her because the tenko is supposed to be an extremely f uh powerful family there's like three families of uh ghost dudes is the best like kind of like mafia families there's the onis which is where nanko's from there's the tengu and then there is what yuna is which is the tenko and basically the power balance is such as that because the Tenko are kind of like in a stalemate, then the other two don't actually fight each other. Because if at any point any one of them gets stronger, then kind of they would rough run, they would run rough shot over absolutely everyone. Uh, and then eventually they tried to, someone tried to basically uh, take Yuna to spirit jail for her crimes because of what she is. And then they end up being like, no, we're going to save you now. And then this is her when she finally remembers who she is, basically. And she gets this super powerful form where she has like a billion kajillion ghost energy power. And she was able to fight like Dragon Ball Z type fights. <laughs> uh, I'm not even lying when I say there's Dragon Ball Z style fights. At one point, I want to say the main character shoots a giant fist into the moon. He just okay. <laughs> he he's able to b put a spiritual power into his fist in order for it to. It's just like a full ass one one shot one punch man style page of his giant fist coming towards the enemy who was at the location of the moon. And yeah, this is her form, her most powerful form, and this is uh, the Tenko awakening. And this is literally the point where she's remembering who she is, and she's like, "I'm going to protect everything." And then it all ends up turning good. Eventually, the, her they end up stopping the dad, and uh, the person she is a clone of kind of wakes up and just accepts that she's going to die. And she says, "I'm so sorry what our father did." She treats her more like a sister. She actually treats all the clones as if they are sisters. And says, like, I'm sorry that you all had to kind of go through with that. You guys didn't deserve it. You should just be happy. And now I'm going to go die. Goodbye. And she goes, okay. And then the series kind of continues on for a bit. Because there's more. <laughs> and there's a lot more uh, weird stuff going on with time travel and a lot of other fights and wars and stuff like that. As you do in any manga zen. This is, again, as, as I said. As one does, of course. <laughs> yeah. This is also the same manga where a uh, character might... In any chapter, the, the main character might turn into, like, a pair of panties, and then he'll, like, have to deal with the consequences. And have to, he has to kind of go, man, this sucks. <laughs> I really don't... <laughs> this sounds way really better than Black Clover. <laughs> it does. It's really funny because he'll, he'll, he's really annoyed with it, too, because he goes like, oh, man... I really don't. He, he's very respectful of everyone's. He's like, I don't like that I'm doing this. I don't like that this is happening to me. This is hell for me. There's also a very good uh, one shot manga page where Yuna gets turned into an extremely buff man. And her, the crazy pervert stuff that happens when she is a busty woman happens the exact same when she is a giant buff man. <laughs> So, like, his ass is in his face, and his chest pulls up to his face. It's That's really funny. fucking funny. He's like, oh, no, this happens regardless. If Even if Yuna was a man, he would still be going through this. And, yeah, that is this form of Yuna. Zen, how do you feel in, like, this is, how I've been wanting to say this since Or Collection. I've been waiting so long to talk to you about what happens in Yuda in the Haunted Hunts. <laughs> it's such uh, a good... I like her. I think she's very good. Yes. Um, a ton of people use her in PvP, me included. Me too. Let's actually get into the unit herself, because I think they've built her amazingly. So her ultimate attack at the, the max level is inflict 505% of damage that ignores guard to one enemy. And if the enemy is tank class, inflict an additional 35% damage. Remove one weakening from this unit. At the start of the next turn, convert one random bubble to a skill bubble with 10% base damage. For two turns, boost this unit's attack by 24%. 
uh, it's a lot for an ultimate skill. For her buddy's skill, it is convert one random bubble to a skill bubble with 114% base damage. Convert the top row and the bottom row of the board, excluding skill bubbles and block bubbles, to yellow. For four turns, boost the attack and recovery of yellow team members by 7%. And her uh, passive skill is boost this unit's ultimate attack damage by 17%, reduce damage received by this unit by uh, 1,700, but it's 35,000 in the tower. For turns 1, 3, 5, and 7 of this adventure, of the, of the adventure, reduce the number of bubbles required to create a skill bubble for this unit by 3. So, she's a... Hank, he barely yeah, takes any Yeah, I think she's damage. super good. There's there's a lot of really good healing like buddy skills for yellow because yeah. you, know, you got the cowboy girl and you've got Mayuri who both are really strong healers. Mm-hmm. Um, so like I slap them both on her, and so at the end of the turn I get 112 H- thousand HP from the cowboy girl. I get another 63 thousand from Mayuri, and I get 35 thousand from her passive reducing the damage that she takes. So it's like yeah. 200 thousand total damage recovered and negated. Yeah, it's it's really crazy. It's and her bubble. ultimate is good too. I just like the, the additional skill bubble is kind of eh, but taking a, like a weakening off, it's not even like reduce the number of turns. It just completely removes weakening, and a lot of people run weakening in the tower, uh-huh. um, as well as just a twenty four percent attack boost that will stick onto the next character. Both are really good. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things. Is like she has, just has multiple things that she does. It's not just one thing that makes her good it's multiple things that they've decided to just give her yeah i mean i think my matches i was doing them during this episode uh, i think she was on every single team that i fought and she was on my team so she was on every team that i engaged with today yes they have i am so happy with how they built her this is that i could not think of a better way for them to kind of build her and then to also make her feel kind of like she does in the manga where this form is like literally unbeatable. Like the only way that I think most people are able to beat it is that she doesn't turn into it. They're like they have to they have to actively stop her when she's in her regular ghost form because if she gets into this form, it's like ah oh, no, you just you're just kind of fucked. There's nothing you can do. So very happy with the way that she's been done. Um, the synergy she has with the some of the best supports in yellow has also been great. And using her in the tower is amazing, especially if you're fighting a um, blue unit because you literally just take zero damage and then you he- you li- you it's just a gain positive if they survive you. <laughs> like I've had entire fights where I was like, um, I had a decent mo- like a decent chunk in the beginning of lost HP, and by the time Yuna's turn was done, she had gained more HP than she had lost. <laughs> Like, there's nothing that they could yeah, do. Yeah, I mean, I, I win games with full health sometimes with her. Yeah, like, that's, that's crazy. I've also had games where so it's nuts. Health. It's so nuts. It's so good. And uh, very happy with what they've done here. If we were doing a big boy scale, she would break the big boy scale. But oh, a million that. percent. Yeah, she's yeah. she's way off the big boy scale for sure. <laughs> And it's really great that they also it it uh, this unit is I feel is good enough to have gone in a full um, series treatment similar to how like they did with uh, M- Momosuke the the buff dude the buff boy remember him oh yeah the, the guy who nobody knows who the fuck he is but he ended up being like the best character in the game yeah very similar situation I feel like they could have really done that with Yuna but I understand that uh, with Black Clover coming in they probably couldn't actually do that so. I'll take this. I'm very happy with what they've done, and I'm glad of how they built her as well. Yeah, I mean, she she does feel a little PvP centric, but I, I yeah. think she's. Um, I really think that good. was the one complaint I saw, which was uh, what the, from Kaze, who was just saying, "Very good." Just wish that she had a little bit more for PVE, and it's like, yeah, yeah, she she, really she very much feels built for PvP. the tower. But yeah. as someone who really likes the tower, uh, that's okay by me. Yeah, same here. Um, but I think that actually just goes to show how important PV is to a lot of people as well in Jumpudi, where it's like, uh, you could have that as well, and you'd, I think, be solid. But I think in her buddy skill for PV would be pretty neat. The converting two rows, yeah, basically. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, the fact that it doesn't convert block bubbles makes me yeah. kind of like, eh. Yeah, that's a little bit but, of But, um, 
It, it is good, and it's a nice just general boost to the whole team. Like, 9% is not crazy, but it's not bad by any means either. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. That was, you know, so thank you, everyone, for... No, just kidding. We have to talk about Black Clover now. Yeah. Um, who are the free-to-play Black Clover characters here? I think it is... Uh, it is... Sec- sec- I don't know how to... Sekra? Sekra Swallowtail, Swallowtail is one. She uh, looks Fauna like a is one. Charla is one. And um, R- Raya, Rhea. Oh, this dude. Yeah, he looks like a dead. The gotcha guy. characters are uh, Nozelle, Fuego, Leon, <laughs> and Asta, and you know. When we're using, we recovering from my, the fact that I say he looks like a deadbeat dead. <laughs> no, I was just laughing that this guy's fucking name is Fuego Leon. <laughs> Fuego Leon Vermilion. Uh, I think act- I can't. I think I can't take it seriously just because of the popular like vernacular usage of Fuego. Fuego, but that means fire. It that means would mean fire. his name is Fire Lion. His name is literally Fire Lion. Fuego Leon. <laughs> and Vermil- Vermilion <laughs> must mean fucking like. Fucking funny to me. It's pretty good. I mean, it's a very <laughs> silly name. I appreciate a good silly name. <laughs> <laughs> and he also has a little dragon buddy which is i think is fun yeah i actually love his little dragon friend it's like the salamander he's yeah. look at him oh he's cute i did a discount on this banner and i think i got my fuego here and i was like okay he has a little dragon buddy i think i can live with this yeah i got i got fuego and i got asta and you know i did not get nozelle oh, okay nozelle is the one that looks like he is cosplaying that character from bleach Yes, he does. I, I hate his hair. Nozelle's hair is like the worst thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, the weird like... S- the front braid that goes down between his eyes. Oh, and it's a cross too. He's, yeah. He braided it with a cross. Yeah, this dude sucks. Yeah, again, Fucking I don't know anything loser. about the character. But he does, doesn't does He's seem... got big Byakuya vibes. Yeah, he does. He does have a... He definitely does give that vibe. And then his art here. His art with... Uh, the gold border around it is pretty good because it's just Asta and the other dude looking at him like, what? Yeah, but Asta and Yuna looking at him like, uh, Whoa. <laughs> Do you see that cross braid, though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're both like, what's up with your fucking hair? The state of your hair, mate. Tell me what's going on. <laughs> uh... Fuego Leon, for example. I don't know. Actually, he doesn't have his little dragon buddy in his art, so I think that's a, that's a little bit of a downgrade on that one in terms of the gold. Yeah, I agree. Art. Dragon buddy is, is my favorite part of this unit. Yeah. So let's get into... Uh, b- besides the free-to-play characters, I really don't got... Other than I think Swallowtail is a very funny name to give to a female character. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, she's also a bird. She, is she actually a bird? Is that why she's, there was like she's a the bird? Thing? Yeah, the bird on the the cover. Like when you log into the game, you see that little dopey bird at the bottom. Yeah. That's her. All right, I think I'm kind of more into it if she's actually just a and fucking she, bird. She spends the majority of the game, or not the game, the majority of the uh, series that I read up to anyway, uh, as a bird. And then oh, like shit. 300 chapters in, she's like, actually, I'm a girl. Huh, that sounds kind of familiar. <laughs> Uh, she's like um, Yor- Yorichi from Bleach. A little bit, yeah, but uh, I, I don't think reveal. I don't think she can change at will like Yorichi uh-huh. can. I think like I think something happens that pops her out of bird mode into girl mode. But I actually haven't read Black Clover in like two years, so I don't know if okay. that, any of that's accurate. So she doesn't pop out of a hot springs like Yorichi does and says, "Actually, I've got titties." No, no, which is a shame because God, that's the best entrance ever. Maybe easily one of the best. I think Bleach is known for having a lot of entrances, but that's my favorite entrance. <laughs> I haven't even read Bleach, and I know that entrance. It was a you that described it as Bleach as a series of characters saying people's names and then <laughs> entering a scene. Yeah, yeah. It's like Bleach is just this series where, like, every single time you're watching it, something really bad is happening. And then inevitably, someone really fucking cool is going to show up and make it better. And everyone's going to go, oh my god, it's you. And then the coolest shit ever happens. Every time. Oh my god, it's you. Fuego Leon. (laughs) (laughs) And his dragon buddy. And his dragon buddy. Fuego Leon and the Salamander. (laughs) <laughs> I think I would watch I would actually read a manga I'd read the Black Clover spinoff manga called Fuego Leon and his dragon salamander buddy 
That's right. Everyone's favorite side character from Black Clover, Fuego Leon. And his salamander buddy have their own spinoff. But then it's like a kind of like slice of life living together in the big city kind of story. It's like it's not a shonen manga. It's, a, it's about the trials and tribulations of when your roommate is actually a giant salamander buddy. And then you would and then you would show the salamander like at work. Like he's working McDonald's. And he's like, <laughs> I asked for these fries to not be extra crispy, and look what you've done to them. <laughs> They're just black. Just like <laughs> charred. He's charred everything. My milkshake is completely <laughs> fucked over. My what ice cream what is, is that? Is that the, is that SpongeBob where it's like, he burnt my shake? He burnt my shake. <laughs> yes. He burnt my shake. <laughs> but then they show the salamander like all sad in his little McDonald's hat as he gets he's laid got off. a little hat and uniform. Oh no! Now I'm gonna feel bad for him. That's right. That's why you gotta read the spinoff Fuego Leon and his salamander buddy, the slice of life. It's actually a very harrowing tale of like the trials and tribulations of trying to live it big in the city <laughs> when you're a little salamander, <laughs> fire salamander, and your roommate's name is Fuego Leon. <laughs> I like to think Fuego Leon is like a deadbeat shit roommate and the salamander is like doing everything. <laughs> yeah, this, the, the salamander comes home tired from work. The dishes aren't done. He's <laughs> he, Fuego Leon has like put up the trash bins, but they're actually on the side of the house. So he's waiting <laughs> for him to throw it away. <laughs> he didn't replace it with a new plastic covering. So he's just been tossing his shit into the garbage <laughs> raw. <laughs> Oh, this is the manga. We need to get in touch with the Black Clover guy. This is what we really do. Happen. Like, dude, you want to sell some volumes? Look, talk to me. You want to make Jujutsu Kaisen money? You want to make some Demon Slayer money? We got the formula for you. We right have here. the plan. Yeah, we have the strat. It's like show the me strat your... is Fuego Leon and the Salamander. And then we show him the Photoshop of uh, the Salamander buddy in a McDonald's outfit, and he goes, "God damn it." Get me on the phone with Shonen Jump. We got money to make. We got some fucking manga to sell. <laughs> That's actually his <laughs> verbatim quote is we got some fucking manga to sell. <laughs> oh, be oh so my good. god. I would totally fucking read that. I would. Could you mind telling me while we're before we get distracted, would you mind telling me what Fuego Leon does? Yes. Uh on my list here okay fuego leon his ultimate attack is 500 damage based on his recovery to one enemy uh and for three turns he burns everyone the burn starts at 1000 and every turn after adds an additional 1000 uh for two turns boost his ultimate attack damage by 10 percent and his recovery by 10 percent it's it which is kind of neat to me because he only hits one enemy but he burns everybody so i, yeah, I do like that it's pretty. Uh, his buddy skill is two yellow bubbles turn into red column paint bubbles. So the ones that pop and make the entire column the same color. Oh, okay. Convert two yellow bubbles into blue column paint bubbles. Convert hmm. four green bubbles and two heart bubbles into rainbow bubbles and recover 13,300 HP. Uh, which hmm. is a lot. That's not the tower number. That's in single player. Really? That's crazy yes. then. That's a lot of fucking health. <laughs> Jesus. Right. Um. And then his main pass, like his self passive, is boost his recovery by twenty percent and reduce damage received for him by one thousand or twenty thousand in the tower. Okay. It actually feels like um, I think, as you said before, recovery units are a little bit weird because it's hard to. Yeah, boost well, it's the just recovery that stat. buffing recovery is not easy to do. Yeah. Um, so you can get like a hundred million attack up buffs, but like if you're trying to make a recovery unit do a lot of damage it's tough but i mean i think he's still good like i think that buddy skill is awesome i think his his uh super is awesome i i think he's very good yeah i like him and it's not just because we've created this fantasy world of him yeah <laughs> with the salamander it's not biased <laughs> <laughs> it's not biased at all none whatsoever i swear to you oh my god um i'm glad to have gotten them for sure <laughs> Let's see. Now let's talk about. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're gonna have to switch to Nozel. And <laughs> what does Nozel do? Ugh, Nozel Silva. God damn it! His last name is Silva, and he fights with like liquid metal. It's so fucking yeah. stupid. Uh, 
His <laughs> ultimate is 400% damage to one enemy, and for two turns, poison them for 200 damage per turn. For two turns, boost his attack by 8%, and for two turns, boost his ultimate attack by 8%. Uh, his buddy skill is convert a random bubble into a skill, boost its blast radius by 1, convert a total of 4 green and black bubbles into blue, and reduce the number of turn on guard... The number of turns of guard on all enemies by one. And for three turns, boost the ultimate attack damage of blue team members by 15%. And then his passive for himself is reduce the damage he receives from burn by 4840 and boost his attack by 18%. He's okay. all right. Yeah. Again, he, he feels specifically built to fight <laughs> this boss that's going to probably be fire related. Yeah, I mean, he's all right. Yeah. I don't love him, I don't hate him. He's probably pretty good, but I I don't like units that feel like they're cripplingly over-specialized, even though I know that's how PvP, PvE is supposed to work. Where, like, you're just supposed to bring this one unit that happens. It's like, uh, uh, there's the one Black Clover boss, like, Lich, the bad guy, the bad elf guy, and for some reason, like, he's just hard-countered by old Joseph. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's like the only thing... Because I think he, I think his whole mechanic is like he's not that strong, but he puts a really strong regen on himself that's like hard to overcome. But old Joseph just gets rid of regen effects that the enemies have, so he just he's just hard countered by old Joseph Joestar, and that's how PVE in this game works: is you just find a character that does one niche ass thing that hard counters whatever the boss is doing. That's funny. That's actually pretty great. But yeah, I can see how that can also be kind of annoying when you're specifically trying to... Maybe, to be fair, uh, at least these banner, these units are not on their own separate summon banner. They are with the Asteroid Yes, unit. I do like when they do that. That is this only like the second time they've done that? Yeah, as far as I'm aware. this is Because they did it with the, the, the guy, the buff, buff boy. Yeah, the buff boy. And then now with this. They did it with the, the, the characters people were sure were not going to summon... <laughs> <laughs> multiple yeah, side it, basically. Well, no, the Black Clover seems to do pretty well. I, no, I have again. to assume it sells well in this game because there's a Black Clover celebration every three weeks. It feels like. Yeah, to be fair, there are uh, Black Clover must be doing perfectly fine to itself. Otherwise, Shonen Jump would have given it the axe like ten chapters in. If it survived like, this, uh, one. yeah, that's true. But like, it feels like we get a new Black Clover limited every two months because we got this year we got Yami and we got Julius and now we got these guys. Yeah, maybe there's someone on the team who just really likes Black Clover. I think that's actually true. I remember someone, it might be, I think it was just in, like, OCHD's chat, and they were like, yeah, uh, the new, like, the director of the game or whatever is a big fan of Black Clover. <laughs> that would certainly explain a so lot. So that of might be why we get a new Black Clover character every, like, like we do a few things, and he's like, all right, let's get back to, to Clover. That's pretty funny. <laughs> I like <the laughs> it is a little funny, just... isn't it? Yeah, I, I kind of can respect that because if I was in his sh his shoes, that we would have a lot more Doctor Slump characters. Yeah, I mean that's fair. If I was in his shoes, uh, we would stop production of the game until we got the license for Jujutsu Kaisen. So wouldn't it be funny if because he's a Black Clover fan, he's actually stopping Jujutsu Kaisen? From <laughs> he's stonewalling it. Stonewalling it really hard. He's one of those dudes <laughs> who posts about the the sales and <laughs> malls all day on Twitter. <laughs> he does the Japanese equivalent of putting up Asta when he's super fucking like when he's he's looking f five foot and built like a brick oven saying my goat <laughs> hashtag Clover Hive <laughs> Clover Hive <laughs> <laughs> where my clove heads at <laughs> representing <laughs> I tried. I tried. I know we're down bad after losing our Black Clover gotcha, but don't worry, I got you. I have a game I'm working on. Don't worry. I'm the creative director for this game. We getting new Clover stuff. Clover Hive. <laughs> never. That would be great. I would love that reveal. We're never going to find it out because we could never ask him because he's, there's a language barrier here. Oh, but I could uh, keep imagining that's what's going on. That's the same reason. We were actually, uh, originally their plan was like, oh, we should uh, coincide this with the release of Stone Ocean because it's coming out December 1st. And he's like, no, Clove season. You know what we're dropping on December 1st? Black, <laughs> Black Clover. Clover. 
<laughs> he, 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 he literally goes to where it says <laughs> Stone Ocean. He crosses it out and says Black Clover Free. <laughs> He's fucking on Twitter like, oh man, everyone watching Mid-Ocean and not Go Clover. <laughs> See it now. <laughs> <laughs> Jolene isn't even that great of a song. <laughs> Easy hashtags it with, <laughs> with Black Clover Hive. <laughs> it's a shame that we've ruined that we've ruined this man's end. He can never <laughs> he can never say anything. Let's get with the last unit here because we've got uh, Asta and you know you know. Uh, you know right. what's crazy? So Asta I, looked, and Yuno. I, looked, I looked at these dudes and I said, which one's Asta, which one's Yuno? I have no idea. As I looked. Asta is the one with the sword. Okay. Yuno is sense. the one with the, the face tat. Okay. These must be the the, the, the the two buddies of the series. Yeah, it's the Naruto and Sasuke of the okay. of the series. Gotcha. Uh so they're are they're actually super fucking busted, by the way. I heard. i uh, I I Yeah, I'd... they're their ultimate is 470% to one enemy and 20% reversal damage or 3% reversal in the tower. For two turns, boost the ultimate attack damage of all green team members by 20% and remove one curse from themselves. Their buddy skill is convert all red bubbles to green. For four turns, inflict 30,000 bleed to one enemy. While the target is affected by bleed, if you connect one or more bubbles with this unit's buddy that are the same but their own color at the end of that turn, Inflict an additional 25,000 damage. That's a shit ton of uh, of bleed damage. And then their passive is reduce the number of bubbles required to create a skill bubble for this unit by one. Boost their attack by 10% or in the tower 34%. Reduce the number of bubbles required to create a skill bubble for tank team members by one. And before this unit's turn, convert a heart bubble to a blue X paint bubble with a nine bubble radius. Yes. Uh, they kind of slap. They're really good. Yeah, uh, I think there was someone in our uh, Jabuti chat who said the they are the best green in the game. Uh, yeah, they definitely are. They're basically like they made Kaioken Goku feel fucking irrelevant. I'll tell you that because <laughs> his whole thing was like I super and I power everyone up, and now they're like yeah I super and I power everyone up, and also I'm fucking crazy. <laughs> Damn. Again, that's the, 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 the main dude behind us uh, throwing some shade over at Dragon Ball Z. Damn, imagine you, yeah. <laughs> you imagine Goku not being able to do what the goats can. <laughs> that's crazy. I, again, I like the idea of them, <laughs> especially now that I know that this is the, the, the director's OCs. Uh, not his original characters, his, uh, his favorite uh, pairing. Yeah, in the world. His, his goats. His goats. It makes their pairing way funnier, <laughs> and it makes them it makes a lot more sense why they're so and crazy busted. Because honestly, if I'm again being one hundred percent real, it's maybe the fact that I think even unless you were like the ultimate like Black Clover fan, like the director of Jumpudi, you would not expect Asta and Yuno to be this good. You would expect them to be good. Don't get me wrong. You would still expect them to be like, oh yeah, these dudes are solid as hell. They're extremely powerful. You would not expect them to be the best. <laughs> There's like a a certain level of just like, really? Them? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. <clears throat> I like duo units, so I'm cool with it. Yeah, the duo units makes uh, things uh, way cooler, for sure. If anyone was going to bust the game, it would be a duo unit. So, fair, fair play to them. I ended up doing my one um, multi for them, and I ended up getting Fuego Leon, so I don't think I'm going to be going any for any more for it. I feel like if I had one unlimited money into a little bit more caring for Black Clover, I think I would probably go for them. But as it is now, looking at that future upcoming, man, I just can't, I just can't justify it. Yeah, there's some crazy shit coming. Yeah, there's some crazy shit coming, and there's like literally the Yuna thing was. Uh, I didn't expect it to be limited. I thought it would just be like new units or something. But they straight up just said, nah, limited. Let's go. I feel like they're probably always going to have a limited for everything from now on. Because like, they know that's what makes the money. Yeah. Uh, but there's also hidden stuff like Toriko. I honestly do believe that at some point we're going to have to get... Now that uh, Stone... Probably in January when it's actually running in Japan. 
Now that the JoJo. Oh, that's right. It didn't the mm-hmm. post to Japan right away, did it? Yeah, no, no, no. So we weird. Go, yeah, it's really weird. It's not on TV at the moment. Um, it's just, literally just all twelve episodes are on Netflix now. And then Netflix, later on, yeah. It's it's really weird. <laughs> I don't know what kind of weird deals they had to do uh, to make that happen. <laughs> But sure, whatever, I got to have 12 episodes. But I would assume that somewhere in January when it's actually airing on TV is when we'll maybe start getting some um, uh, Part 6 JoJo stuff. And then they probably have to also think about what to do for the other version of the game that isn't allowed to have any JoJo. They have to oh, have... they had the Taiwan version. Yeah, the Taiwan version. That's so of... funny that they can't have JoJo characters. But yeah. it also kind of sucks because like, the, the replacement characters they get are also pretty fucking cool. Yeah, they have the cool version of Carrot from One Piece that I want. They and have the uh, Edo, Edo Karama Cloak Minato also, like the, the corpse version of him that has the Karama Chakra Cloak. Yes. God, dude, he's so cool. I want him. Yeah, he, they I got, love they, Minato. They got a lot of cool stuff for sure. Um, they have to because they're not getting any of the JoJo dudes. And yeah, they're, like, they're sitting there like, we got to give them something. We gotta yeah, give him something. It has to be significant because it, this is JoJo we're talking about. So, I mean, I, I hope... definitely prefer all the JoJo characters over those guys, but I want those guys too. I'm greedy, man. Give me everything good. <laughs> I don't give a shit about other people. Exactly. <laughs> give me all of it. I'll give Absolutely. a fuck. I'm still tilted that Fortaro sucks. <laughs> that again. That's the director at talk. He's like, oh yeah, JoJo mid. <laughs> JoJo mid. Black Clover goat. <laughs> Bad father Jojo, jo- jo- bad father Jojo, <laughs> come out. Asta would never. Asta would never. The second when the, when Black Clover two starts, the blackest Clover and the his, blackest Clover and uh, his son. Uh, let me see. His, his name is Asta Basta. <laughs> Basta, Basta. Son. Basta and Buno. Basta and Buno, <laughs> they sound like the blood version of Asta, and you know. <laughs> They're going to rock the charts, that's what they believe. And if my game is still running, you got to be damn well sure that they will get their just certs. Uh, we are good for some... This has been a harrowing episode. <laughs> of... Yes. We take, we take like two-week break, and we come back completely ready to say whatever comes to the mind. Oh man, I really need that AU with Fuego Leon now. I really need it. I'm gonna if, if I can figure if I need to find a perfect. I might actually just do it to the little um sprite here. I think I'm just gonna add like a little McDonald's hat to him. Not yes, explain. please God. Yes, I need that. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Not explain it, and that will be. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can really edit to Fuego Leon to make him look like a shitty <laughs> of a roommate. <laughs> but I assume that you'll just uh, infer that from his look. Put like a little bong in his hand. <laughs> the, 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 uh... Actually, I don't know. I don't think I don't think Fuego Leon does drugs. Look at this man. It's too straight laced. All right, we're done. Everyone. Yeah, that's a, that's that's a good boy. Yeah, that's a good boy for sure. Just a bad roommate. Very sheltered. Doesn't know what he's doing. Um, thank you everyone for joining us for another uh, Japuti Jams. If you enjoyed it this much and you made it all the way to the end, please leave a like. It helps a whole bunch. We do this regardless because it's fucking fun, but it does help. Yeah, it does. It's just, you know, it's not about the uh, the metrics as much as it's just like, oh, people are enjoying this. You know, exactly. It makes me feel good. If anything, yeah, it's, it's, it's literally a, it's a the pat on the back. I'm already taking the hit on the video. I know compared to <laughs> some of the other stuff I could be releasing. Oh yeah, so a... whatever the algo likes from your channel. Exactly. But I don't give a damn what the algorithm wants, then. I'm not listening to some <laughs> not fucking... not going to buckle roof. to the algo. I'm not going to listen to the man. I'm going to continue releasing our weird content. that I <laughs> Our weird, random shit. Exactly. So, thanks a bunch for making it this far. We will see you guys in the next uh, video, whatever it might be. Next video is going to have some uh, We Never Learn. I can't wait to talk about... Um, the uh, the also weird time travel shit that exists and we never learn the multiple timelines that exist in this manga that is also a horror manga 
that is actually yeah, set in the I, real I think world. we have a really good dynamic going where I'm like, oh yeah, this battle shown in, this happens, and then you're like, yeah, so this uh, big titty time travel demon manga. <laughs> Oh damn! That sounds like a really good manga. If that, that existed, I would <laughs> I would read it. <laughs> it's exactly what our uh, our dynamic is. It really is. It's <laughs> it's funny then, and we're all put together in the ultimate combination of the two, which is Dragon Ball, where Akira Toriyama Correct. at the beginning, <laughs> where Akira Toriyama says, "I'm about to make one of the greatest shonen, and also I'm about to show Bomo's titties. Let's go." <laughs> And thus, <laughs> we created the ultimate fusion. Thank you, everyone. Until next time, you guys have a good day. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Say goodbye, Zen. Bye, everybody. There we go. I'm waving, but they can't see me. <laughs> <laughs>